All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good noon. Good night. Whatever time it is, and you're watching this. So this is just video solutions for your little practice worksheet for today. So if you don't want to watch this, that's fine. If you want to just use the written out solutions, you can do that. If you feel like you got this down, that's certainly fine. Don't need to use all your time watching me solve through these. But if you had questions, you know, wanted to see a few problems worked out, then certainly feel free to watch this. And I'm just going to walk through the steps on every single problem. And away we go. All right, so first one, just graphing practice. So graphing a rational function like this, y equals 2 over x minus 3 plus 5. This actually is in sort of our nice graphing form because we can just look at this and say, hmm, where are my asymptotes or asymptotes, as some people say. So the vertical asymptote, it's just what number makes the denominator zero here. Well, what makes that zero is when x is equal to three. So that's our vertical asymptote. That was quite poor, wasn't straight at all. The horizontal asymptote, hmm, well, this has just shifted up five. So our horizontal asymptote is that y is equal to five. All right, so there are asymptotes. And to graph this, remember our shape is called a hyperbola here. Then basically, we just make a little xy chart, pick some numbers to plug in. And we usually want to have our middle value for x be the actual vertical asymptote, pick a few numbers on each side, and then just plug and chug, plot points. So if I try and plug in 3, well, I can't divide by 0. That's why it's an asymptote. If I try and plug in 4, well, I can plug in 4, divide that out, boom, 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 and I get 5.5. Nope, I do not get 5.5. I get seven. If we try and plug in five, you get two over two is one plus five is six. So if we're at four, seven and five, six, those two points, my hyperbola has to go like this because it approaches the asymptotes. If we plug in two here, plug in two for X up on your top equation, math, 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 you get three. If you plug in one, so plug in one and we get four. Then we have the point two, three, <clears throat> excuse me, one, four. So this other piece of our hyperbola would have to look like this. Okay, so there are my graphs, there are my asymptotes, the domain and range. So remember, domain is what I can plug in for x. It's basically how far left and right my graph goes. Well, I can go as far left as I need to, as far right as I need to, but there is one value of x that doesn't work here. x cannot equal 3, right? I can't plug in a 3 here because I don't get any answer for that. So my domain is really everything except for 3. My range, that's just the possible y values or how far our graph goes up and down. Well, it goes up forever, it goes down forever. So I can be any y value except for 5. I can never get 5 because that is my asymptote. So there's our graph, domain, and range. Nito burrito. All right, number two here another graphing one, but oh no, it's not in our nice form. So remember our handy trick here was to actually synthetically divide this thing out. And bring the one down, multiply. So after we synthetically divide, we get one plus two over x plus five. And that's in our much nicer graphing form. So here our vertical asymptote, would be x is equal to negative 5. Our horizontal asymptote, y is going to equal 1. So at negative 5, y equals 1. There's our asymptotes. 
Then to find our actual points, we're just going to make a little XY table, plug in values, and math from there. Okay, if you plug in negative 5, we get does not exist. If we plug in negative 6, let's say, we'll get negative 1. If we plug in negative 7, we get 0. If I plug in negative 4, I get 2 plus 1 is 3. Plug in negative 3, we get 1 plus 1 is 2. All right, so we have negative three, positive two, negative four, positive three. So there's part of my curve. Then we have negative six, negative one, negative seven, zero. And we've completed our graph. Okay, the domain, my x values can be anything except for negative five, because if you try and plug in negative five, we end up dividing by zero, which we cannot do. Our range, my y values can be anything except for one, because there's an asymptote there. So there are asymptotes, domain range, and our graph, nicely done. Good job, me. Woohoo. All right, next problem. Hmm, I just have, okay, solving for x. This looks. Kind of fancy, but not too bad. This is what we call a proportion. It's just a fraction is equal to another fraction. To solve anything like this, we can just cross multiply. So 21 times x minus 1 should equal our other cross multiplication. 2x plus 2 times x plus 2. So I'll distribute the left side. 21x minus 21. We'll have to foil out the right side. So 2x squared plus 6x plus 4. To solve this, to solve any quadratic, you want to make one side of your equation all equal to 0. So I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side. So we get 2x squared minus 15x plus 25. Now to factor this, we're going to have to use the AC method because there's a coefficient in front of the x squared. So the AC method, you go A times C. 2 times 25 is 50. So you need numbers that multiply to 50 but add up to negative 15, which appear to be negative 10 and negative 5. So we'll go 2x squared minus 10x minus 5x plus 25. There's four terms, so we'll factor by grouping. Our first group, we can take out 2x. Second group, we'll take out negative 5. So then our actual factorization is x minus 5 and 2x minus 5. That's equal to 0. So our actual solutions, x can be 5, and x can be 5 halves. Which you do want to just double check in your head to see if those answers actually would work, like you don't have any weird divide by zeros. If I plug in 5 here, it's not going to mess up any denominators, so that should be good. If I plug in 5 halves, same sort of thing, no zero denominators, nothing weird. So those should both work as solutions. All right, number four here. Mm, it's slightly fancier. It's not a proportion because we have multiple fractions added together. So to deal with this, we want to just multiply every term by the least common divisor, which here, the common denominator for this is x minus 3 times x minus 5. Because if that multiplies to every single fraction, so multiplying out to all three fractions. Well, our first fraction, the x minus 3 is going to cancel out with this x minus 3. 
So we'll end up with x plus 3 times x minus 5. So that's from our first fraction. Our second fraction, the x minus 5s cancel. So we get x times x minus 3. Equals, on the right side, the x minus 5s cancel. So we get x plus 5 times x minus 3. All right, so now it's just lots and lots of algebra to solve. So this first term, we're going to have to FOIL. So x squared minus 2x minus 15, once you FOIL that, then distribute this x. So x squared minus 3x equals, the right side, we'll have to FOIL that, x squared plus 2x minus 15. So that gives us 2x squared minus 5x minus 15 equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. So we'll get everything to one side. I'm going to move everything to the left side. So we'll get x squared minus 7x equals 0. If I plug that all in, factor out an x. x times x minus 7 is 0. So my actual solutions, x could be 0, x could be 7. If I check, I plug in 0, that works. If I plug in 7, I get negative 1 plus that. Yep, that should work as well. So these both work, nothing weird that messes these up. 0 and 7. Okay, number 5 is a nice word problem. So crane A can unload a ship. Takes 10 hours. Crane B can unload it in 14 hours. Alright, so crane A starts unloading the ship at noon. And then it's joined at 2 o'clock by crane B. And then they work together. All right, so we know that crane A, if it takes 10 hours, its rate, it unloads one tenth of the ship per hour. Crane B can unload one fourteenth of the ship per hour. And once they both start working, their combined rate is just one tenth plus one fourteenth, which if I write as a fraction, is 6 35ths. All right, so I'm just going to keep those in mind. Those are my rates. All right, so first off, train A starts working, and it works from noon to 2. So that's working for two hours. And how fast is train A on load by itself? One-tenth of the ship. So crane A unloads two tenths, aka one fifth of the ship. So if one fifth is unloaded, that means four fifths still needs to be unloaded. So that's at two o'clock. And the reason that's important is at two o'clock, crane B jumps in. So now they are both working. That's from 2 until question mark, whenever it ends. So their combined rate, we just said, was 6 35ths. So the rate, and we're going to use our equation here, the rate times the time should equal the total amount. So their combined rate is 6 35ths per hour. The time is what we're trying to find. And that should equal, from 2 o'clock on, how much ship do they need to unload? Well, not one whole ship, actually just four-fifths of the ship, because one-fifth already got unloaded just by crane A. All right, so then to solve for T, we're just going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, 35 over 6. So our T is we can multiply straight across, you can cross cancel.
you get four and two thirds. And our units were hours. Which if I'm talking to you and talking about a length of time, I usually don't say two thirds of an hour. I would write this as four hours and some amount of minutes. Well, since there are 60 minutes in an hour, two thirds of that is 40 minutes. So after they both start working, it takes another four hour and 40 minutes for them to unload the rest of the ship. So then who could tell me the actual final time that the ship is unloaded? Well, they started at noon and ship A worked until two. And then starting at two o'clock, it took another four hour and 40 minutes. So the actual time that this ship is unloaded, it's 6.40 p.m. Coolio. All right, next up, pharmacist. Mix in our solution of boric acid again. Hmm. Okay, so wants to make 1.8 liters of a 10% solution. And this pharmacist, she has a 7.5% solution and a 12% solution and trying to figure out how to mix it up. So she's starting with, she's got a 7.5% solution, a 12% solution, and she wants to mix those together and get a 10% solution at the end. All right, so I'm gonna make my little table here and I can say volume times the percent should be the actual total amount of boric acid. So what do I know? This pharmacist, she or he wants to make 1.8 liters at the end. So I'm just gonna call this volume X. The other one I can call 1.8 minus X. I've got our percentages. And the total, so the total acid for each one, should just be the volume times the percent. So for our first container, the amount of acid we're using is 0 0.075 times X. For our second container, we're using 0 0.12 times its volume, 1.8 minus X. The total acid in the final mixture should be 10%, 0 0.10, times our final volume, 1.8. So then we're just gonna use our third column here to set up our equation. So we know we're mixing these two pieces together to equal this final mixture. So we'll say 0 0.075 X plus 0 0.12, 1 1.8 minus X should equal our 0 0.10 times 1.8. All right, so then we just need to distribute terms. So 0.12 times 1.8, we'll have to do that. That's 0.216, then minus 0.12x should equal 0.18. So now combining x terms, 0 0.075 minus 0.12 is negative 0.045x plus 0.216 equals 0.18. So I'm gonna subtract 0.216 from both sides of the equation. So we've got negative 0.045x is equal to negative 0.036. Divide both sides by negative 0.045. So x is equal to 0 0.8. And what did I mark x as? x was the volume of the 7.5% solution. So there's 0.8 liters of that, which means there has to be exactly one liter of the 12%. So 0.8 liters of the 7.5% solution and one liter 
of the 12% solution. And now we're chemists. Woohoo! All right, next one. Kari or Carrie made her bathtub way too hot. Ah, ooch! Oh no. So if right now there's 30 gallons of water in her tub and it's 110 degrees, and then she turns on the cold tap, which fills in 40 degree water, she wants to figure out how much of the cold water she needs to add to get the bath down to 100 degrees. Hmm. All righty. Okay, so what she has, there's sort of the current hot water, and then she's adding on cold water, and there's gonna be a mixture at the end, so the final bath water. All right, so currently, how about we have volume? She currently has 30 gallons of the 110 degree water. She's gonna add a certain amount, so that'll be like an X. The total volume should just be 30 plus X. All right, the temperature. So currently it's 110. She's adding in water that's 40 degrees and she wants the mixture at the end to be 100. And this last column I'm gonna call like total heat or energy. Okay, so really we can do a sort of multiplication here. Really heat is just a way of measuring energy. So I can say like the volume times the temperature is just like the total amount of heat or total energy in something. So in my current bathtub, there's 30 gallons times 110 degrees. I'm just going to say 30 times 110 is 3300. What we're mixing in is X gallons times 40. So that's adding in 40 X. So that's sort of the amount of energy it's going in. And our final mixture should be 100 times the volume, 30 plus X. So it's starting to look a little familiar. Now we can probably use this last column to make our equation because we're just adding these two things together to get this final mixture. All right, so we've got 3300 plus 40X should equal 100 times 30 plus X, 30 plus X. All right, so then we just have to distribute, solve, math it up. All right, so I'm going to move all the x's to the right side to subtract 40x. So that'll be 100 minus 40 is 60x. Subtract 3,000 from both sides. Divide by 60 x will equal 5. So she needs to add 5 gallons of the cold water. Sound good? Which is that sort of reasonable? If there's 30 gallons of really hot stuff, 5 gallons should cool it down some, but not too much. Okay, I'm just kind of checking my mass here. Yep, looks good. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right, last one. So pipes A and B can fill a storage tank. So pipe A can fill 
a storage tank in eight hours by itself. Pipe B can fill it in 12 hours by itself. And gates are filling it with water or something, gasoline, whatever, whatever they're pumping. So I'm going to say there's pipe A, there's pipe B, there's both of them working together. So we're going to have to use sort of a rate times time here. Pipe A can pump one eighth of the tank per hour. Pipe B can pump one twelfth of the tank per hour. So that's our rate. Okay, combined, their combined rate should just be one eighth plus one twelfth. Which, if you math it up, get a common denominator, is 5 over 24. Okay, so let's look at this. So, part one. We turn on pump A at noon. It runs from noon to 2. And how fast did pump A pump? It's 1 eighth per hour. So we can say the rate times the time should be the total. So it pumps 1 eighth of the tank per hour times 2 hours. It pumps full 1 fourth of the tank. So at 2 p.m., 1 fourth is filled up, 3 fourths remain. Why that's an important time is right at 2 o'clock, well now pump B gets turned on, and so now they're both pumping together. So if we use rate times time here, now their combined rate is they can pump 5 24ths every hour, times the time, that's what we're trying to find could equal what the total amount they still need to pump, three-fourths of the tank. So to solve for T, we're just going to multiply by the reciprocal, 24 over 5. And you can grab a calculator and multiply that out. 3 over 4 times 24 over 5 is 3 and 3 fifths hours which I like to write as three hours and a certain number of minutes. Well, an hour is 60 minutes, so three-fifths of that is just 36 minutes. So from 2 o'clock, it took another three hour and 36 minutes to fill up the tank, which means the actual time they finish is 5.36 p.m. Okay, so good challenging problems. That was your only goal for today, was just try and work through these, practice, see how you did. Obviously, feel free to contact me. These are not easy. They're quite difficult, but embrace the challenge. All right, have a pleasant math experience and enjoy the rest of your day. So long.